Welcome to labmins.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to look at how to implement QoS in your MPLS environment. We're first going to try and understand the default behavior of the QoS and see how the packet DSCP values are treated as the packet enters the MPLS network. Then we're going to look at the three commonly known MPLS QoS model, which are shot pipe, pipe, and uniform. And along the way, as we proceed through the lab, you will get to see the feature like table map and see how the explicit null plays a part in the QoS. For our physical lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8, and one switch, switch one, with R2, R3, 4, and 5 are connected across zero point-to-point -point links, while the other routers are connected across multiple layer 2 VLANs, as shown in this diagram. Okay, so this is pretty much the same lab topology that we have dealt with so far in this lab video series. Next is our layer 3 topology. And here in the middle, we have our MPLS VPN core network with the router R1, 2, and 4 being the P routers and the router R3 and R5 being the P routers. Okay, in this lab, we're just going to deal with one customer, C1. And here we have our router R6 and R7 VLC routers. And both of the routers are advertising their loopback 10 through 12 across the MPLS VPN network. And we are still running BGP for our PECE routing protocols with the AS number for our customer is 65124 for both of VPN sites. Okay, so all of these has already been configured at this point. It's pretty much what the what we did in the past lab back in the MPLS video. So we're just going to borrow the configuration as our startup configuration. And now we're just going to build a QoS configuration on top of these. Okay, so let's get started with that configuration task number one with the default behavior of QoS. First, we need to configure the following QoS queuing policy on the router R2, which is our egress PE routers. And this is going towards R7. And we want the queue for our EF packets to have the priority queue of 15%. For the CS3 packets, we want to guarantee bandwidth remaining of 15%. Okay, then we're going to perform a ping from R6 to R7s with the SCP value of EF. And then we're going to run packet captures on both R1 and R2. And then we're going to review some of the packet markings as it traverse our MPLS network from R6 to R7. Okay, so first thing first, let's do some quick basic connectivity test from our CE router R6. Make sure R6 has learned all the routes from R7. And then make sure the R6 can ping R7 as well. So R6 is ping R7 loopback 10, sourcing from its own, say, loopback 10. Okay, so you can see that we have currently reachability across the NPLS VPN. So now we're going to begin our QoS. Policy configuration on the router R2. So here on router R2, we're going to have two queues, one for EF and one for CS3, starting with a class map to match DSCP FEF, so match IP, and then you can see they can either match DSCP or uh, IP precedents. Here we're going to do DSCP, and then we're going to specify as EF. Okay, then another class map. For our CS3, match IP DSCP CS3. Okay, then for our policy map, and let me kind of bring up the diagram. So what we're configuring is right here on the interface, outbound to R7. So we're going to call it to LAN, since it's the direction of the packet. It's going towards the LAN to R7. First for our class EF, this is going to be our priority queue. So command priority. Again, this is just the basic QoS configuration on the router. So priority, and then we're going to specify a percentage. And the task set, we want to give it 15%, I believe. So here, 15%. And then for our class CS3, for this one, we're going to do a guarantee bandwidth. So bandwidth, here, remaining. So we do remaining percent of 15 Okay, then we have to apply that to the fast 00 interface towards R7 with the service policy command. Okay, direction is going to be output, and that would be to LAN. Okay, before we can do the ping test, we need to set up our Wireshark packet capture. So we are going to be capturing here at the router R1 fast 00, as well as a route R2 fast 00. 
Here's so let me hop over to uh, switch to set up the monitor session. And our router R2 is connected on fast 02 and all we care is the receive packet. And then uh, R1 is on fast 01. And our washer cap uh, packet capture machine is on the interface 24. Okay, and then so you can see the content of the MPLS labels. We're going to run debug MPLS packet. Let's say the packet is probably going to go through R3 and then R2. So we're going to run a debug on R3. So debug MPLS packet and we just enable debug on the R2 as well. Okay, so let me bring up a Wireshark. Kind of have it run in the background and then we're going to do a ping from R6. We're going to do extended ping, so ping with the target address of 7701. Okay, extended command, yes. The source is 6601, and we want the type of service, and this is in decimal. So for EF, it's 184, and you can kind of do your own calculation to double check that for EF. And then here we can see right there our ping packets. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a quick review on our packet capture. So this is the first ping request packet from R6 to R7. I can see we get a double label or MPLS label as it leaves the router R1. Okay, you can do show IPCF, let's see, VRF C1 7701. Okay, so we're expecting label of 19 and 27. So let's take a look right here. 19 is the transport label with the if you notice right here, experimental bit of 5, okay, and we also have the bottom label, which is a VPN label of 27 with the experimental bit of 5 as well. And now if you expand the IP header, you can see this the original source and destination IPs. And if you look at the differentiated service fields, the DSP value is expedited forwarding, okay, which is what we have set on our ping packets. So you can see that the DSCP gets translated automatically to the corresponding experimental value on the MPLS and it's actually get both labels are marked with the experimental value as well. Okay, now we can see the second ping packet and this is the one that's being captured at R2. Okay, and you can tell by the, if you look deep enough at the MAC address, you can tell it's the one that's coming out of R2. And to the LAN, as you can see, there's no longer any MPLS labels. There's just the re uh, regular IP packets since the MPLS has been, uh, label has been removed before a packet get placed to the LAN. And you can see that the original DSCP value of EF is still intact. The MPLS network never really touch or make changes to the DSCP value. Okay, if you kind of go back to look at our debug on R3 and R2. So first R3 and arriving, leaving R1, we obviously saw that on Wireshark and entering R3, you can see that it has the label of 19 and 27 and the second digit that is experimental value. So they both are five. And as the packet arrives at R2, you can see that the top label was removed due to the PHP behavior. And now we're just left with VPN label and the, that is 27 and uh, five for experimental value. Okay, and now on R2, if we do a show, since we have our policy map configured, outbound of R2 to the LAN, if we do show, policy map interface you can see that we have a hit counts or packet counts of five packets for the class map ef okay so we know that our five icmp request packets got matched by that particular queue or placed into that particular queue okay so behavior number one is by default the scp value on the ip packet is automatically translated and transferred to the corresponding experimental values on all of the MPLS label that get imposed onto the packet as it enters the MPLS network. Next, we need to configure R3 to replace the experimental value of 5 in the top label with the experimental value of 3. Okay, so we're going to override any packet that's coming in to R3 that has the EXP of 5 with the EXP of 3, and then we're going to have to make a note of the EXP value in the packets as it is being received by R4 and R2. Okay, so when you want to modify the experimental value in the MPLS label like this, you usually need to do that on the ingress interface of the router. 
So it might be somewhat intuitive to do that, or you might think it's possible to do that as the packet leaves the interface of the router, but you will find that it would not work. So what you have to do is to apply a policy map to the interface that's the packet that's coming in. In this particular scenario, anything that carries ESP uh, 5, we're gonna replace that with the EXP F3. Okay, so the configuration has to be completed on our router R3 with the class map. We're gonna match, let's say any uh, EXP 5. And our mesh command is match MPLS, experimental, topmost, and the value is 5. Okay, and then putting that in a policy map, let's call it from MPLS, class EXP5, and then we're going to replace it using set MPLS experimental, and we just want to replace the topmost, okay, and we are replacing that with three. Applying that to the input interface, so service policy input from MPLS. And for our testing purposes, we're going to go ahead and since we have redundant path to R2 here or R7, we're going to shut the interface down just to make sure that we force packet through R4 so that way it becomes predictable and we can just monitor the packet on R4. So let me shut that down. And now I'm going to rerun the Wireshark. Okay, so continue without saving and then back to R6. Do another extended ping. Yes, 666-01-184. Ping went through. And let me stop that. And let's kind of walk through the packet flow. So leaving R1 right here. We're still seeing that the experimental values for both labels are 5. Okay, and as that enters R3, which is received on fast and 0, 0 right here, it came in as 5 and 5. Okay, but as it leaves our interface 0, 0, 0, 0, that goes towards R2. Oh, sorry, that goes towards R4. So right here, 0, 0, 0, 0. You can see how the top label EXP value has changed to 3. And this is because of the policy map that we just configured. Okay, so that's the packet that will be arriving at R4. And then once it arrives in R2, the top label was removed. So we no longer see the experimental value of 3. We just left with the VPN label with the EXP of 5. So you can see that the as the packet gets removed, the EXP value of the label that was removed doesn't get copied down to the next label. And that's the default behavior. And then obviously once it hits R2 and leaves R2, we still have our the SCP value of EF and the IP pack. Okay. And let's do another show policy map interface on R2. You can see now that we have a 10 packets uh, matched to our class EF. Okay, so that's five in addition to our previous ping test. Okay, let's go ahead and reset that counter for our next test. So behavior number two is experimental value does not propagate down as the MPS label is removed. So as we saw here, the packet that's arrived or leaves at three. Can I remove that? It was uh, three and five. I'm not sure why well, the font got smaller, but as it leaves the router at four, it was just left behind with uh, five. All right. So that should complete our task number one.